Introduction to Chemical Safety Due to business needs, factories must keep many types of chemicals, and some of these chemicals may be dangerous if not handled in the right way. Mishandling chemicals can be dangerous, resulting in serious health problems such as cancer, nervous system disorders, internal damage, breathing problems, and so on. Chemicals can also damage your skin, eyes, nose, and throat. These can lead to loss of earnings as you get sick from being exposed to harmful substances. Mishandling chemicals might even result in a fire or explosion. You would risk losing your job if the factory burns down and potentially cause serious injuries and even death. But it does not have to be this way. We all need to be careful when we store, label, and handle chemicals. And to make sure we and our co-workers are protected when using chemicals for the benefit of everyone. Aware. How do you know if chemicals are harmful or dangerous? Sometimes they are easily identifiable. For example, look around where the chemicals are stored. You should see signs in chemical storage areas and labels on chemical containers. Labels often classify chemicals as explosive, flammable, oxidizing, corrosive, having acute or environmental toxicity, carcinogenic, sensitizer, irritant, or gas under pressure. You might also see labels that are specifically for the transport of explosives, gases, flammable liquids and solids, and other materials. Sometimes chemicals are not so easily identifiable. For example, chemicals used in dispense by machines are often unseen or unlabeled chemicals may be used manually when you do your work. So the first thing you should do is ask and learn about the chemicals being used at your work. You should ask, A. What is a chemical? B. Is it harmful or potentially dangerous? C. What does the manufacturer of the chemical recommend that we do to protect ourselves? If your work is to store, manage and dispense chemicals in the workplace, you must be well trained by your factory management before you start your work. If you do not receive proper training, the risk to you and the factory is very high. You must become aware by learning what risks you are facing and how to best protect yourself and others from potential harm. Follow. Are there any chemical containers, large or small, in your work areas that are not labeled to identify what is inside the container? Oftentimes, you see reused containers of instant coffee, creamers, or water bottles being used as chemical containers or chemicals in transit without proper labels. This is very dangerous and against the regulations. Every container holding chemicals must have a clear label indicating what is in it. Do not reuse any chemical containers. 
When a residual chemical is mixed with other chemicals, it may cause dangerous reactions such as poisonous fumes, fire, and explosions. Do not sell or use chemical containers, especially for storing food, cooking oil, sauces, or water for drinking or washing. It can cause devastating consequences to humans, making them sick and may even cause death. Used chemical containers should be properly stored, returned to the chemical supplier, or disposed by qualified contractors. It is your manager's responsibility, as much as yours, to inform and learn about the risks associated with each chemical and to practice how to protect yourself and others. If the chemical requires you to wear personal protective equipment called PPE, such as appropriate gloves, goggles, respirators, aprons, shoes, or anything else, then you must. If you don't, you expose yourself and your co-workers to unnecessary risks. The PPE you use must be appropriate to protect you. Inappropriate PPE is not only useless, but it can actually cause more harm than good. PPE information is included in the material safety data sheet called MSDS that chemical suppliers must provide to your factory. At a minimum, all managers and employees who are exposed to chemical risks must learn what the MSDS requires as PPE and safe handling procedures. Often you'll find that some of the required PPE is not comfortable to wear, but it is like medicine. Doctors' medicine or injections are not comfortable, are they? PPE is like preventative medicine. If you want to protect yourself and others, you must faithfully use the PPE. Like clothing, most PPE comes in different sizes. Your factory is required to give you a size that reasonably fits you. So be sure to inform your manager. Some PPE requires special storing methods for it to remain effective. For example, respirators. Respirator cartridges are expensive. When not in use, respirators must be kept in a sealed environment so that they do not continue to absorb chemicals and expire unnecessarily before their due date. Expired or damaged PPE should be replaced. It is your responsibility to know how to recognize when your PPE needs to be replaced and to inform your manager. You must learn how to properly use and store PPE. Be observant of other workers. Are they using makeshift personal protection devices, such as a towel wrapped around their face? Are any of your co-workers complaining of not feeling well, smelling odors, etc.? If so, talk to your co-workers and alert your supervisor. Being sensitive to those around you can also help you take precautions. Also pay attention to warning signs. Stay away from areas that use or store chemicals unless your work requires you to be there. If you find anyone smoking where the signs indicate no smoking around chemicals or eating where the sign indicates not to, immediately alert your supervisor. If your work is to store, manage, dispense, and dispose of chemicals or hazardous waste, you must train specifically about the hazards. Your manager is responsible for making sure you have received thorough instructions and you are responsible for learning and following the procedures correctly. Make certain that appropriate emergency response equipment and communication devices are properly maintained in any chemical storage area. You are also responsible for preventing spills and releases, making sure that wastes are disposed of safely, and being familiar with spill cleanup procedures. 
Waste spills involving large volumes should be handled by a qualified contractor. If you are not trained to handle large spills, you should at least be aware of how to control the spill before the contractor arrives. Protect. In the case of an incident, such as spills, fire, and explosion. When you walk by areas with chemicals, take note to see if there are any obvious chemical spills, lids that are not tightly sealed, chemical <gasps> containers that are dented, damaged or defective, or packaging that shows leakage. If you find something amiss, then you must notify the factory representative by following the instructions posted on the nearest emergency communication device. You must be aware of the different types of emergencies that can occur and when it is safe to follow appropriate procedures to contain spills and releases. However, you must follow the evacuation and handling procedures you have been trained to follow. If you are aware of chemical risks, observant of those around you, and carefully follow the proper safety procedures, you can help ensure a safe and healthy place for you and your co-workers.